Hello everyone, Florian here and welcome to another episode of Heiser Says. Tonight I'd like to talk about changes happening in New South Wales with their hate speech laws. New South Wales is a state on the east coast of Australia, right here. Now the people that play rugby better than them are up here and are below here. I say that because the state of origin is starting soon. It's an Australian joke, overseas people won't get it. So ABC News published an article New South Wales hate speech laws will be toughened to stop violent threats online or in the streets. After years of widespread community campaigning, the New South Wales government will move towards strengthening the state's ineffective hate speech laws. Under the proposed legislation introduced to Parliament today, individuals who incite violence against a community or person based on their race could face up to three years in prison and an $11,000 fine. The bill, if passed, will create a new offence in the Crimes Act, one of publicly threatening or inciting violence on the grounds of race, religious affiliation, sexual orientation, gender identity and intersex or HIV AIDS status. Attorney General Mark Speakman said, Current provisions in the Anti-Discrimination Act have been ineffective in prosecuting people accused of encouraging violence and have not led to a successful prosecution in 30 years. We are very serious with these laws and we will throw the book at anyone who breaches them so they're going to make a public example of the first person they get with these laws. Mr. Speakman said there had been a re reluctance to use the existing laws because of procedural hurdles and the convoluted wording of the legislation. We'll have a look at that legislation. He said the new laws would apply to speech on social media and anything that is available to the public whether it is transmitted electronically or physically in the street. So I wonder if that's going to affect religious books which incite hatred and call for violence against particular groups. Free speech does not include the right to incite or threaten violence based on people's characteristics, he said. But it does include the right, he's implying by this, to incite or threaten violence on things other than people's characteristics. Is that what you're saying there? This has nothing to do with saying things that are controversial, with robust debate, with intense criticism of other groups. This is about stopping violence. No, it's not. This is about moving legislation from one document to another document to allow your people to prosecute more efficiently and easily with the intent of hoping to stop violence. But I would suspect that it'll be ineffective, drive more of these people underground or anonymously online where they will feel more resentful. And it will also affect the freedoms of normal citizens and it will be taken advantage of by pests and people with ideological reasons to limit speech. We saw it happen with Kruger. They, you know, the same person complaining over and over again using this legislation in 20D. What's he going to do when it's a criminal thing? It's even scarier. The leg legislation will abolish offences in the Anti-Discrimination Act that currently carry a maximum sentence of six months in jail. I like the idea of what they're trying to go for, but the road to hell is paved with good intentions, and this is going to have more effect than they realize. It makes us all a whole lot safer. Now, I just am a cynical bastard, and anyone who says anything like that, thinking a law will make us feel safer, is just nuts. I don't believe a word of it. Let me know in the comments what you guys think. Opposition leader Luke Foley, who introduced a similar bill to Parliament earlier this year, welcomed the announcement. For too long, some in the Liberal Party have confused freedom of speech with race hate, he said. Okay, so he's just a social justice nutter, obviously, by saying something like this. He doesn't get it. Tough new laws will send a signal to the likes of the extremist fringe that their brand of racism is no longer tolerated under the law. Well, it isn't tolerated now. You just haven't been able to prosecute, probably because it requires a bit of effort. Keep New South Wales, spoke, keep New South Wales safe spokesman Vic Alhadef has campaigned for tough hate speech laws for three years. Now, when I read that, I thought at the beginning it said years of community campaigning, and here only three years. Three years doesn't sound so impressive to me, so it's pretty good he's got it this far. He said that changes would plug a gap in the state's anti-discrimination laws. Well, no, it's moving it from one thing to another. It's just going to be easier to prosecute people. 
the government has drawn a very important line in the sand and they've made it very clear that incitement to violence is against the law. Now, that, that actually surprised me. I went and had a look at the Crimes Act and I thought that simply trying to incite people to violence, say if you've got like maybe a union meeting and you want to go bash the bloody managers in, or Antifa saying this bash the fash, I thought that would be incitement to violence. And I thought that wouldn't be allowed. But then again, you know, it, it's a slippery slope. If you start limiting that, what else is going to happen? I guess that could be one good thing with this legislation. You know, the, the liberalists down in uh, New South Wales just report every bloody Antifa website. Because I looked at them the other night. They're just full of bash the fash, uh, violence, violence, punch out at people. And they all wear masks on their head and they think they're the good guys. Yeah. Anyway, back to this. Mr. al Hadef said moving the offence within the Crimes Act will make an unequivocal statement. I don't think anyone's going to realise. It's just going to piss off everyone who wants freedom of speech and feels like that they're being crushed more and more and more and this world is becoming so politically correct. That's what it's going to say. He's picked the wrong time to think to achieve this. It quite frankly makes us all a whole lot safer, he said. Yeah. If anyone has examples of where these laws actually reduce crime, I'd be interested to see. So here's Vic. He's the um, CEO of the New South Wales Jewish Board of Deputies, former chair of Multicultural New South Wales, former editor of the Australian Jewish News, and he's run 25 marathons. He's also from South Africa, so I wonder if his experiences there have, have made him concerned with this. So let's watch just a little clip where he's getting people to participate in this Keep New South Wales Safe. Several months ago, several months ago, the leader of an extremist group stood on the streets of Sydney and openly called for death to members of our community. The New South Wales law was completely powerless to do anything about that. Our aim is to ask the New South Wales government to put in place a law which will protect all of us. We encourage every single one of you to go to keepnewsouthwellsafe.com and from there email a letter to your MP. It will take you 30 seconds and every letter makes a difference. So, I mean, that's interesting. That's their campaign to get people sending letters. My understanding is that with a lot of those those campaigns that are just centrally generated, they just counted as one submission. But, I mean, they've, they've got it this far, and these, this is the community organisations that are involved. And, you know, we've got imams in Britain, to a clear example. They've got many examples where people are bringing in uh, overseas imams that are literally preaching hate. The example that he gives are, you know, people on the street, imams on the street preaching in Sydney, hate against Jews. And I wonder if this will give them the power to address that, or maybe it really should be something in their own community that should be addressed. It shouldn't be something that affects the rest of our society, because that's what it's going to. The road to hell is paved with good intentions, guys. So, you know, that's the, that's the community coalition. And let, let's just read through some of their frequently asked questions. So, keeping a uh, Keep New South Wales Safe is a coalition of community groups who have come together to urge the New South Wales Parliament to enact legislation that would make it illegal to incite violence against people based on race, colour, descent, or national, ethnic, or ethno-religious origins. These are all the organisations that are involved. What is the coalition trying to achieve? They want to keep New South Wales safe by changing laws. They want it to be a safe space place for all. Oh, I almost said safe, safe space for all. No wrong thing. We want to stem the tide of racially motivated violence by making it against the law for individuals or groups to promote violence on the basis of race, colour, descent. Oh, no. See, that, that's the thing with all this. You know, we already have legislation in place. They don't want to do that. They don't, you don't want to make it against the law. You want to make it easier to prosecute people that are breaking this existing law. You want to transfer it around. If this campaign campaign is successful, will it limit freedom of speech in New South Wales? This campaign is not about freedom of speech. Okay, you may may argue correctly that it's not about freedom of speech, but it is going to scare people and it will limit their speech, even if they don't realise. Most people will not go through this legislation. They will not even look it up on YouTube. They will not, you know, they'll be concerned. To do with what's going on in the world, it'll be enough just to scare them into compliance and silence. And this will be abused by people for ideological purposes, guaranteed. So let's have a look at what we currently have in New South Wales and what they want to move into from or remove from this and have a new um, section put into the Crime Act. 
So 20D of the 20D of the Anti-Discrimination Act, offence of serious racial vilification. A person shall not, by a public act, incite hatred towards, serious contempt for, or serious ridicule of. Ridicule of. So you can't even ridicule a person, I guess, on these specific criteria. A personal group of persons on the grounds of race of the person or members of the group by means which include threatening physical harm towards or towards any property of the person or group of persons. That seems reasonable. Inciting others to threaten physical harm towards or towards any property of that person or group of persons. The maximum penalty here is 50 penalty units, 6 months in jail or both, or a corporation 100 penalty units. A person shall not be prosecuted for an offence under this section unless the Attorney General has consented to this prosecution. Okay, so the Attorney General needs to consent to it. So in 30 years, they haven't been able to nab anyone under it. So they want to make it easier, really, to get someone under this. Now, I went and had a look through the Crimes Act to see what they had. And what I found here was quite interesting, because a lot of people are talking about blasphemy laws, de facto blasphemy laws that we're getting. And you can't really be prosecuted for blasphemy in Australia. No person shall be liable to prosecution in respect to any publication by him or her orally or otherwise of words of matter charged as blasphemous, where the same is by way of argument or statement and not for the purpose of scornful or reviling, nor for violating public decency, nor in any manner tending towards a breach of the peace. But this is how they'll get it. They'll say if you say anything that uh, people consider, you know, a breach of the peace, you might say something, you know, oh, I'm critical of, of this aspect of, you know, Muhammad's teaching, and then, you know, you get Muslims rioting everywhere, and you're done for a breach of the peace, and they bring in this new legislation into this act, and, and boom, you're in jail. Okay, I may be being a bit facetious here, but it does, you know, that they want to toughen up this, that, that, scares me a fair bit to be honest that they really want to toughen it up what do you think guys do you think this will make us feel safer there's a protest march organized in the next few days in new south wales to publicly show that people are concerned with this i'm a little worried that it's going to be abused i think it's you know good intentions honestly the light of day and sunlight will sterilize these stupid idiots and these bad ideas or else they will just go down into hiding you know, they'll just go down into hiding, they'll find other ways to communicate, and you won't be able to see who the nutcases are. Well, guys, thank you all very much. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Heiser Says. Please like, share, comment, subscribe, and I will see you all again next time. Take care.